Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture in which we are discussing the common symptom which the patient comes up with and that is the red eye and what are the common causes of red eye and how to differentiate between the three most important causes of red eye. So what is meant by redness of eye? The redness of eye is actually the final common response to any of the anterior segment disease. So when I mean by what I mean by anterior segment is your conjunctiva, cornea, the iris pupil, lens up to the anterior vitreous. So that forms the uh, anterior segment of the eye. So when you have problems in the conjunctiva that can cause the redness of the eye. When you have problems in the cornea that can cause redness of the eye. Similarly when you have problems in the anterior uvea as well you can have congestion or redness of the eye. So any response any disorder of the anterior segment can come as final common response can be the redness of the eye. So whenever you have a red eye a common question that you need to ask is whether it is painful or is it painless right. So whenever the redness of eye is painless along with that if the vision is normal you have to tell uh, you can actually deduce that it is coming from the conjunctiva and the most common causes conjunctivitis. So we know that in conjunctivitis there is redness and usually the patient will not have enough uh, much severe pain right and the vision also will be normal because conjunctiva does not form much uh, role in the vision. It is the cornea which is involved in the uh, light uh, refraction and absorption and therefore whenever the cornea gets involved you will have decreased in the vision. However if the patient has painful law painful uh, eye along with the redness and along with that the patient is having photophobia then as I told you in my video on photophobia whenever there's photophobia two things can get involved number one is your cornea and number two is your anterior uvea so the patient is having pain and he's having uh, presence of photophobia so you can think and along with that he was having blurring of vision then definitely your cornea is involved so it could be keratitis and anterior uvea can be involved that is anterior uveitis along with that another end entity which is there is an acute angle closure glaucoma in which you will have raised IOP with shallow anterior chamber and that can also present as red eye with lots of pain and photophobia. But one more symptom that you see in acute angle closure glaucoma is the presence of colored halos. So this is very important symptom which can help you differentiate uh, the red eye whether it is uh, acute angle closure glaucoma or uveitis. Now significant blurring of vision usually will be present in anterior uveitis because of the presence of KPs that is keratic precipitate on the back of the endothelium of the, on the back of the cornea which is the endothelium. So for most causes anterior uveitis is going to be painful however chronic anterior uveitis sometimes can be painless also. Now what are the most common differential diagnosis of red eye? So what I mean to say is here we are going to try to differentiate between conjunctivitis, acute anterior uveitis and the acute angle closure glaucoma. So let us see how can we differentiate these three, uh, three, three entities. Number one is based upon vision. So as I told you that in conjunctivitis the vision is usually going to be very good because the cornea is not involved it's only the conjunctiva. Now in acute anterior uveitis because of the presence of keratic precipitates on the cornea the vision uh, decrease there will be some loss of vision there will be some decrease in the visual equity however this visual equity drop will be uh, so the vision will be fair because the visual equity is not much affected however in acute angle closure glaucoma because the IOP is going to raise you are going to have microcystic corneal edema right so this microcystic corneal edema is very specific to raised IOP in which you will have this very tiny Tiny, tiny bubbles if you see it under the slit lamp examination and because of the corneal edema you're going to have poor vision in acute angle closure glaucoma. Coming to what about pain? In, conjunctivi in conjunctivitis usually patient will have only mild discomfort that means 1 out of 10 or 2 out of 10 on the pain scale. Now however if the patient has acute anterior uveitis the pain will be moderate and usually it will spread along the first division of the trigeminal 
nerve so we know the trigeminal is actually supplying the eye and uh, the ophthalmic division is a v1 so along this uh, this area you will have pain in acute anterior uveitis however in acute angle closure glaucoma the pain is really severe about 9 out of 10 and it will spread along the entire trigeminal area so the patient can have jaw pain patient can have pain in the tooth area as well in the temple so all these areas can have radiating pains in case of acute angle closure glaucoma so acute angle closure glaucoma is most painful followed by anterior uveitis and then conjunctivitis is not painful at all coming to the secretions based on secretions if you have to differentiate in conjunctivitis if it is mostly a bacterial conjunctivitis you are going to see a mucopurulent discharge however in viral conjunctivitis you might have watery uh, discharge as well but for bacteri bacterial conjunctivitis it can be purulent or it can be mucoid discharge along with purulent discharge now coming to the acute anterior uveitis in acute anterior uveitis you will have watery discharge and similarly in acute angle closure glaucoma you will have watery discharge so now this picture over here shows the acute purulent discharge probably a gonococcal infection in this child okay and this is the conjunctivitis now however you can see such a kind of picture where the discharge is more of watery discharge so this could be acute uveitis or it could be the acute angle closure glaucoma then photophobia i already told you that photophobia is present whenever the anterior uvea and the cornea is involved and therefore it is seen in acute angle uh, acute uh, anterior uveitis because the uvea is involved and in acute angle closure glaucoma because the cornea will be involved with corneal edema However, in conjunctivitis, since none of them is involved, the photophobia will usually be absent. Coming to the presence of colored halos around the light. So what is meant by colored halos? So whenever the person looks at a light, they are going to see this ring of lights which are uh, different colors, rainbow colors present along the light in the form of a circle. That circle is called a halo. Okay, so that is called a colored halo. So the colored halo is usually seen in acute angle closure glaucoma only and it ha happens because of the corneal edema that we see in acute angle closure glaucoma. That microcystic corneal edema will change the refractive index of the cornea and because of that varied refractive index we will have different refraction of the eye uh, different fraction of the light because of that different refractive index and different sorts of refraction you're going to see this colored rings around the light and it is very specific of acute angle closure glaucoma in conjunctivitis and acute anterior uveitis usually this will be absent coming to the type of congestion now this is very important when you talk about conjunctivitis since the conjunctiva is supplied basically by the superficial vessels, the type of congestion in conjunctivitis is said to be superficial. Now, in acute anterior uveitis and in acute angle closure glaucoma, you are going to see deep ciliary congestion. And this deep ciliary congestion is also referred to as CCC. Now, what is meant by CCC? CCC stands for circumciliary congestion. So what is meant by the circumciliary congestion? Circumciliary congestion means if you have this cornea as the iris and the pupil. In CCC as the name suggests circumciliary it is going to be present around the cornea and this is called the circumciliary congestion. Okay, it is going to be concentrated around the cornea. So, let me explain it to you with this diagram. So, in conjunctival congestion, what happens is it's a superficial type of congestion which is seen in this first picture. Now, the amount of redness will be more in the fornices. So, fornice is the area where the eyeball, where the lids are actually getting connected to the eyeball, right? So, you can see the palpable congestion. That means the palpable conjunctival congestion is more, the congestion is more in the fornices. And as you progress towards the cornea, the congestion is going to go down. However, in circumciliary congestion that you can see over here, the congestion is more in the area around the cornea and if you see in the fornices, the congestion will be less. So, this is CCC and this is conjunctiva. Congestion more in favor of conjunctivitis and CCC is more in favor of uh, the corneal pathologies like uveitis and like the angle closure glaucoma. So, that circumciliary congestion or CCC is very important finding. This table differentiates the type of congestions. 
in superficial congestion as i told you it is maximum at the fornix and it fades towards the limbus as you go towards the cornea and that and you reach the junction between the cornea and the conjunctiva which is called the limbus the congestion is going to fade away then the color of congestion is bright red and the vessels which are involved are superficial vessels anterior and posterior ciliary vessels however the deep ciliary congestion is maximum at the limbus that is around the cornea and it fades towards the fornix the color will also be pinkish there will be a pinkish hue present to deep ciliary congestion since the vessels involved are also deeper ones right and the vessels over here are the anterior ciliary vessels and these are the vessels which are coming along the uh, your musculature that is the lateral rectus superior rectus inferior and the medial rectus so these are the vessels which are coming from the posterior ciliary vessel arteries and then they are uh, coming anteriorly and supplying the muscles and from the muscles they are supplying they are forming a plexus around the cornea and those plexuses are going to get congested whenever the cornea is going to have any abnormality and therefore presence of ccc or deep ciliary congestion indicates that there is a corneal or the anterior uveal pathology next we have the pupil so what will be the shape of pupil in case of conjunctivitis in conjunctivitis usually the pupil will be normal okay since the anterior conjunctiva anterior uvea and the iris are all normal and not involved in conjunctivitis in case of acute anterior uveitis the inflammation is present in the uh, in the anterior uvea so you you will have inflammation in the iris also which is called iritis and with time what will happen is there will be you know, adhesions which will develop between the lens and between the iris because of which which is called the posterior synecae and because of which when you dilate the pupil the pupil will be very irregular in shape so usually the pupil will be small and when you dilate the pupil the pupil is going to look like this because in the areas of adhesion the pupil is not going to dilate and in the areas where there is no adhesion the pupil is going to dilate so it's going to look this irregular shape pupil which is called festooned pupil okay so this is called festooned pupil seen in anterior uveitis and in anterior uveitis the pupil shape is small and irregular In acute angle closure glaucoma the pupil usually is very sluggish it's usually large or mid dilated and vertically oval so the shape of pupil is very very important and can also give you a clue towards the diagnosis So you can see over here the shape of pupil is mid dilated now one more thing that i want you to tell uh, before i go there is the depth of the anterior chamber so what is the depth of the anterior chamber in conjunctivitis the depth of anterior chamber will usually be normal okay so the anterior chamber depth is nothing but it's a distance between the cornea and the iris okay so in acute angle closure glaucoma the distance is actually decreased so if you see in this picture the iris is more anteriorly placed which is actually shown in the slit lamp uh, image you can see in the slit this is the corneal slit and this is the uh, slit of the iris which are very close to each other so if you do a von herix grading you will find out that this is about less than 1/4 of ct corneal thickness so that is the acute angle closure glaucoma in which you will have shallow anterior chamber coming to the tenderness in conjunctivitis you do not have tenderness in acute anterior uveitis and angle closure glaucoma since it involves a trigeminal nerve uh, segments definitely the patient is going to have tenderness as well coming to intraocular pressure in conjunctivitis pressure will be normal in acute anterior uveitis it can be normal it can be raised it can be low so when acute anterior uveitis is nothing but it is inflammation so in certain conditions like uh, the especially the viral anterior uveitis what happens is there will be inflammation of the trabecular meshwork also which is called trabeculitis now whenever there is trabeculitis the outflow uh, faculty of the eye will be compromised and the aqueous drainage will go down and therefore you will have raised iop however whenever the patient lands from acute to chronic anterior uveitis what happens is that the ciliary body will undergo shutdown okay because of chronic inflammation there will be damage to the ciliary body and the ciliary body is the one which is producing the aqueous humor so with inflammation with chronic inflammation ciliary body is going to undergo ciliary body shutdown because of which the ciliary body is not going to produce uh, adequate aqueous humor and there will be low intraocular pressure in acute angle closure glaucoma however as the name suggests it's glaucoma and the pressure will be waste 
Are there any systemic associations with them? Yes, in conjunctivitis, usually it is absent. In acute anterior uveitis, there will be referred pain. And in acute angle closure glaucoma, there will be systemic symptoms like prostration and vomiting. So this table actually summarizes the common causes of red eye and this is taken from the Parsons Book of Ophthalmology. So I will leave you with this table now. Thank you and have a nice day.